Welcome to the channel Geography Made Easy. In this video, we will be looking at difficult topics in an easy manner. We will be starting with Chapter 1 of the ISC syllabus. The Chapter 1 consists of locational setting of India, a comparison with China and Australia. In this chapter, we will be basically focusing on how India is located in accordance to its neighbors and how with some of the most important countries and continents we can compare India. So let us go back here to the fact that India lies in the northern hemisphere. We have seen in the map that to the south is the equator and India is lying above the equator. So 8 degrees above the equator. So it is in the northern hemisphere. The earth is divided into two hemispheres by the equator or the centermost line of the earth which is the centermost latitude. The northern part is known as the northern hemisphere and the southern part is known as the southern hemisphere. Similarly, a longitude divides the earth into two equal parts. The parts, this longitude is the greenage line or the prime meridian. So, countries lying east of the prime meridian which passes through Greenwich in UK fall in the eastern hemisphere and countries lying to the west of uh, the Greenwich meridian timeline is falling in the western hemisphere. So, essentially Japan is in the eastern hemisphere and the US is in the western hemisphere. Similarly, India, Bangladesh and all its neighboring countries in the Southeast Asian diaspora lies in the eastern hemisphere. The Tropic of Cancer divides the country into almost two equal halves. We will again see the map and try to understand this. And the southernmost point of India is called the Indira Coal, which is present in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now, these points are very important from the respect of map pointing. Let us have a look. So, this is where my India Coal is lying. And uh, the Tropic of Cancer is dividing India into more or less two equal halves. We have... The standard meridian for India passing through Prayagraj or Ilhabad. So this is the place. This can also come. The value is 82 degrees 80 minutes east. This is the value of the longitude which is dividing India into two equal halves on the eastern and in the western side. This map is very important in terms of map pointing. And in the previous ISC question papers, we have seen that questions from this chapter has basically come from the maps. The next most important understanding of the latitude and the longitudinal differences along with time zone calculation is important. So, what is a time zone? Time zones is basically the difference between the times in two places. So, in India, which is quite a vast country, we do see a difference of around two hours between the easternmost part of India and the westernmost part of India. So, the sun rises in Arunachal Pradesh two hours before it rises in Gujarat or Shaurashtra, which is the westernmost part. So if you are living in Arunachal Pradesh and the sun rises at 5 a.m. sharp and your friend who is living in Gujarat will experience sunrise at 7 a.m. So this is the difference which is there between the sunrise timings. And why this difference is there? The calculation is done in this manner. Difference of one longitude with every one longitude, the difference of 
time is of four minutes. Therefore, between the eastern and the western tips of India, there is a difference of time of 120 minutes. Because there is 30 degree longitudinal differences which are present there. So, this is the reason why we see a two hour difference between the eastern and the western part of the country. Next, what we need to understand is India and its neighboring countries. India is the seventh largest country in the world. Again, this can come as a trivia question. It shares its boundaries with the following countries. Pakistan and Afghanistan in the northwest. China, or rather Tibet, in the north. Nepal and Bhutan also in the north. In fact, Nepal and Bhutan are two landlocked countries lying between China and India. Myanmar and Bangladesh in the east. So, India holds a very important geostrategic location. So we will understand that later. India has... 6,400 kilometers of coastline. If you look at the peninsular shape of the country, it is consisting of 6,400 kilometers of coastal area. Now, this is also very, very important in understanding India's geostrategic location in the Indian Ocean. So, if we can also say that India is neither a pygmy nor a giant among the nations of the world. It is neither too small or not even as large as countries such as uh, USA or Canada, but not even too small. So it has, if you look at its geographical uh, area, it is quite an imposing country and has a lot of global strategic importance. This is the map which shows India and its neighboring countries. This again can be an important map which can come in the examination. It shares borders with Afghanistan at the tip, Pakistan in the west, China, Nepal, Bhutan in the north, Bangladesh and Myanmar in the east. It has its neighbor as Sri Lanka, the island in the south, and as well as Maldives. Moving on to the next slide. We need to understand how India holds a very important position in the Indian Ocean. In India's geostrategic location plays a very major important role as India has a huge amount of coastline through which India has historically we have seen has always held an important place for trade and transport routes. Today we see that the ports, port cities of Chennai, Mumbai, Kolkata play a very, very important role as the trading routes pass into Africa, they pass into the Southeast Asian countries and Europe. And with the invention of uh, air, aircrafts, India has also played a very, very important role as most of the important cities, and there are more actually, which form major routes, trading routes for the airports. So India is well connected. India is also called the mistress of the eastern seas because of this trade linkage which India has. Now last but not the least, we will be looking at the comparison of India with two other countries. 
one is china and the other is australia which is an island continent now the similarities between china and india are that more or less they are having a large longitudinal extent the size of china area wise is a little larger than india and it has very very important uh, geo strategic location in terms of trade so the difference here this is not a very very important question in terms of examination but the differences can be asked in terms of a 2 mark or a 5 mark question similarly with australia the longitudinal extent and the latitudinal extent shows that it is around 2.34 times having more area than that of india and it has 10 to 30% more longitudinal extent however the latitudinal extent is more or less similar so australia is a very important country continent and it is very similar to india in its geographical locations this country is located in the southern hemisphere as compared to india so these questions the comparative questions are not that important but can always be asked in the examination so last we let us look at some of the important questions from the examination point of view these are the most important questions which i have seen in the previous isc question papers that why is india called a subcontinent so the reasons the large latitudinal longitudinal extent the geographical diversity the area these things have to be mentioned in a 2 to 3 mark answer if it comes as a sub part of a larger questions latitudinal and longitudinal extent and its comparison to australia and china can be asked so you can make a table for this and just memorize the latitudinal and longitudinal values values which can be asked either in the map or can be asked as a two mark question geo strategic importance of indian ocean which is again it will not come as a very large question but can come as a 2 to 3 mark question where three points 2 to 3 points can be written as to highlighting the ports the airports and the trade routes which has been existing for india indian standard time and simple calculations can come as short answers clubbed in a larger chunk of a question very very important from this chapter's point of view is the map work which can be asked so these if i think if you prepare for these things i think you will get questions which will be common for you so do you have any doubts and questions please feel free to comment in the chat section and do not forget to like subscribe this channel and if you find this channel useful please share with your friends thank you and see you in the next video